afternoon. Thanks for uh, coming and attending this talk on some advanced controls. Uh, I'm from Aerotech. We uh, manufacture motors, drives, controllers, and, and some mechanics, and we use some of this stuff in our, our systems. So uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with the general control problem, just to set the stage, right? So I have some controller, I have a plant, I have an output that I'm interested in controlling, and in the presence of some disturbances, I need to, to track uh, some signal Y uh, to as close as I, I possibly can. I'm going to show you three techniques that you can use. One called harmonic cancellation, the second command shaping, and the, the third an enhanced throughput module for, for doing just that. So harmonic cancellation, you can use this for uh, any time you have a desired trajectory which is periodic um, or some disturbance which is periodic in the system. A uh, common one would be uh, cogging a ripple torque in a motor or if you have some mass imbalance on the spindle. Whenever you have a spindle you have to mount something on there. You inevitably have some imbalance that you cannot remove from the system. As you rotate that you'll have some effect on the spindle or any other axes it's attached to which will look like a sinusoidal air disturbance. Often these disturbances are not easily measured or they're very expensive to measure so you need some other technique for handling them. The harmonic cancellation architecture looks like shown here where you have a, uh, a typical plant uh, as well as a controller and then a new controller inserted into the system here I call C of S. It acts on the air signal and then adds back into the air signal. You can make an appropriate selection of that as shown uh, here with this equation. It's basically a, a peak notch type of filter. If you look at the frequency response to that, I have three three terms that I've added here and basically you see the response is some very high gain at specific frequencies that I chose for the filter. If I take my controller and evaluate what is the output, Y, due to this disturbance input, I get by looking at the transfer function 1 over infinity which is 0. So any sinusoidal disturbance will not affect that output at all. And the same if I have a sinusoidal disturbance, a sinusoidal input, y of s, I'll see that I have a tracking error of zero. If I would look at the rejection curve in the frequency domain, the green line here is what the, the normal curve would look like without the filter, and the blue line is what it looks like with the filter. So what you can see is at three distinct frequencies, I have zero transmission. Therefore, something like a ripple torque or a mass imbalance would not affect the output of the system. The first diagram I showed you was a you know really generic diagram. Here's a, here's a diagram with a a free mass. Typical dual loop controller feed forwards. I insert my harmonic cancellation filter in before the current loop. Now there's a little bit of art in this as well because systems are not linear. They're nonlinear. They have friction in them. Other other attributes that don't make a, a standard linear filter ideal. So there's a little bit of art in this implementation and we've implemented this as a time varying filter or something that is spatially related to the system. So here's an example. So consider a, a typical AB where I may want to rotate this A uh, and this B at the same time. There's a mass imbalance on them. As I rotate one of the axes it's going to affect the, the motion of the other axes. So let's assume I put in just a simple 10 hertz oscillation into the, the A axis. And then uh, I move it, say, one degree at 10 hertz. I look at my air signal due to that in position, and I'm about 21 milli-degrees, plus and minus. I then put in the filter at 10 hertz, and I look at the resulting air. I've now taken my air down for that same oscillation uh, down to plus or minus one milli-degree. So it's uh, 21 times less air just by applying this filter than if I didn't have the filter in. Now, there's harmonics that you can see in this signal. If you look at this, you can kind of see, well, there's a, probably a third harmonic left over. Uh, I do an FFT of that. You can see there's no spike at 10 hertz, which was the first harmonic we removed. Now you can see there is a, a third a third harmonic at uh, 30 hertz. So I, I now apply a 30 hertz filter. 
and look at the result. And I've, I've now moved this down to about you know half a milli-degree. So I get a little bit more uh, reduction in the air due to uh, adding a harmonic. Probably if I looked at the, the, the FFT here, I see what I expect. The 30 hertz harmonic is gone, the 10 is still gone. Everything else is pretty much in the noise. Probably not worth trying to add any more harmonics on, onto this system and, and improve the air. But you can see something like a you know, 40 times reduction in the air due to this, say, simple oscillatory motion that you're trying to, to move on the A-axis. If I would look at that in the, the frequency domain like I showed you before, what you see is very high gain at the 10 and the 30 hertz, which is what removes those uh, errors that you see there. Here's one other example. So I have an air bearing. I wanted to try to remove all of the, the friction and, and other types of nonlinearities in the system and see, well, just how well does it work if I, if I have a very predictable system. So here's an air bearing. I again uh, stimulate this with a, a sine wave at 10 hertz. And I have the harmonic uh, cancellation filter off for this blue movement. And you can see that there's about 27 microns of, of air sinusoidal. I then turn it on and I actually have this green line that looks like a zero line is the resulting air. It's, it's less than 20 nanometers peak to peak. Uh, that's a 63 dB reduction in the air. So again, very, very large gains in terms of air reduction with this filter. What are the applications? So torque or force disturbances in a system, cogging torque, ripple torque. Uh, unbalances uh, resulting from, from loading the system, uh, mass imbalances from the, the architecture of the system. Applications I've seen, a lot of MEMS testing, sensor testing, where you want to oscillate something, uh, where you're trying to mitigate, say, the sensor error that you may have in your system that has some sort of frequency. Uh, disk drive tracking, uh, non-circular machines, so a CAM profile can be broken up into four-year series and then eliminate the error uh, dur that, during that motion. Uh, E-chains. As you move a linear axis back and forth, the E-chain the e has some sort of small perturbation it, it, it has as the E-chain rolls over. It's spatially related to the movement or to the air. Uh, spin stands, uh, contouring, all applications where this would be very useful. So conclusions, uh, any place that you have a frequency or a spatially related sinusoidal disturbance or trajectory you'd like to follow, you can apply this harmonic cancellation technique and, and achieve great reductions in the air. Somewhere between 20 to uh, 1,000 times, depending on applications that I've seen where we applied this. So the second technique that we use to, to mitigate air and follow better is enhanced throughput module. So I basically take a sensor package, I mount this to my base, and I feed that into the control algorithm to counteract, say, base movement or disturbance that might enter the system. Mostly we use this for improving settle time. You have a move and settle problem, you'd like to quickly move, but uh, you need to have a very fast settle time so you can improve the throughput of your machine. It has both hardware and a software that uh, you use for this, and you can easily retrofit this onto an existing machine. Here's, here's an example of a, a fairly stiff machine base. You can see here in the, in the green uh, the end of the move. So I've made a move and I'm just looking at the transient. And you can see here the, uh, the die down. The, the red lines here represent where I would like to be in position before I could actually, say, uh, apply some process to this, this material. The green line shows the results with the ETM. You can see I settle much quicker, uh, probably about 14 or 15 percent quicker here. Uh, that translates into more productivity in, in machine throughput. Here's one, one other additional example with the ETM. So I have a, a system. I do nine move and settles. Uh, I have no ETM in the system. What you have to do when you tune this is the way you insert it into the control loop, you have to, to make sure that you appropriately scale and uh, have the right phase for the system. So what I do is I look at, say, the end of one of these moves, and you can see here where I've overlaid the, the current and the position error. I can see a relationship here that looks like they're out of phase, and I can take the ratio of the gains, or the peaks of those, to get the gain. And that's what I insert into the loop. So I make the same nine moves, and you can see the red line here is where the, the moves used to end. 
Um, I've increased the, the production rate of this machine by 14% by mounting a sensor package on the base, inserting it appropriately into the controller. Last technique that I'll survey here is the command shaping. So it's a feed forward technique. It means you can't destabilize the system by adding this in. And what you can do is eliminate vibrations from structural resonances when you're doing a point-to-point uh, -point move. Uh, things like camera shake, maybe uh, laser head mounting vibrations, uh, chuck motions or disk drives are good examples where this might be very useful. Uh, the controller doesn't need to measure or see that actual vibration. So if I have a, you know, a pendulum and I'm, I'm moving something and it's wobbling at the top, I do not need to measure that motion. I do need to measure that motion when I set up the machine, but then afterwards I can remove the sensor um, or, or I can measure at the encoder and look at what the vibration looks like. The one offset uh, that, or negative that you have here is you do increase the length of time of the move by one half of the cycle of the resonant frequency. That's not all that bad. If let's say the frequency was you know 10 hertz, well, it's a point point one is the time is the uh, one over t. Uh, so 0.05 seconds I'm going to lengthen the move. Now, because what this will do is stabilize the system faster, I usually can then increase the acceleration and, and recover that lost time. So ordinarily in the system, I don't really lose any time. Here's how this works. If you, if you picture your system as a linear system, uh, you would hit it with an impulse. You would, you would have some sort of characteristic movement like this that would oscillate at the resonant frequency. If you could determine how to hit it with a second pulse of the correct amplitude and time later, you would excite that same resonance and it would look like this. When you add these together, which you can do with, with any linear system, what the resulting response is, is this plus this straight line. So you, you, you take the resonance, you allow it to uh, convolve on itself or to overlay itself and virtually eliminate any of the air at the end of the move. Here's a, a simple example of that. So again, I'm only looking at the end of the move, I'm not looking at the move itself. You can see in the, in the, in the blue, the end of the move, and I'd like to settle within here, uh, plus or minus 0.2 uh, microns. Uh, it takes me to about somewhere around here before I can settle without the, the command shaping filter. And then I apply the command shaping filter, which is in the red line, and I can, I can settle here. So again, this is, I've seen anywhere from, you know, 15 to 30 percent improvement in the settle time by using this technique. Here, here's a system with a, a base that's, that's quite shaky. The, the resonance is, is uh, very high. So you can see the response in the blue line, really see the resonance dying down. Now I, I apply the command shaping and you can see in the red line here uh, the resulting, right? So, you know, if I was looking at some tolerance band even way out here, you know, the, the red line is, you know, much, much faster in terms of its settle time. So those are the three techniques I wanted to survey with you. Um, thanks for your attendance. Any questions, certainly I can be available for those.